Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we are going to be reviewing or previewing uh, this weekend's UFC card from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to, uh, to our attack of the slate. Uh, the idea is to not just teach you how to be you know, winning this week in MMA or to even be a great MMA better per se, but just how to look at betting markets uh, in, in a sharper way. I'm trying to figure out where the public is is over committing their narratives, over committing their biases and figuring out, you know, how to best fade those those over over commitments. And MMA is, is particularly um, suited for this um, because during the course of a week of the week, the entire betting community sort of group thinks their way into very, very, a very small number of outcomes. Uh, in uh, in a sport or in an endeavor which is filled with chaos, and whenever you have that situation, the 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 narrative that has been kind of agreed upon, even if it's binary, if if if, if one fighter wins, it will be this way. If another fighter wins, it will be this way. Those narratives, even if they are more likely to come in than the others, are always in my in my observations the overbet side of it. Um, so. That's how we approach MMA wagering. We're not specifically figuring out, you know, what we think is going to happen. What we are we are specifically figuring out is what everybody else is convinced is going to happen and fade it. The idea being is that is that uh, it's never quite as clear cut as the betting market will will have it. You know, will will have you believe, and will have itself believe really. Um, and, and this type of approach applies to everything that I really do between this DFS, not so much DFS, DFS is, you know, you kind of more accept that the narratives are true um, or accept that the consensus is true and then do lineups accordingly. But when it comes to straight wagering, whether it be on this, whether it be on other sports, whether it be wagering on the stock market, for example, and analyzing companies um, to try to figure out what part of a, of a, of a company's price is driven by bias and narrative as opposed to what is, you know, what is driven by actual data. Anyway, that's probably a longer introduction I needed to, but let's get into it uh, again. For those of you here for the first time, here are the rules. You're going to be betting one thing every single fight, and uh, it, that's obviously not the greatest money management system in the world, but we don't care. We are also going to be betting one unit per fight, and for me, one unit is uh, $180, and I think it's, I think it's healthy for me to say what a unit is. I hear all the betting people say, I have the unit this, unit this, unit that. And I know that it's different for everybody, but I don't know, I think it's good to put a reality number on this. Um, and again, putting the same amount on every fight, again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world either, but we don't care. This is more of an educational and, and, and psychological exercise than a true kind of like bankroll management system, or even a bankroll management lesson. We're just trying to figure out how to train our brains to come to a good value and we're just going to fire it now the other thing that we like to do is there are 11 fights and since we are going to be somewhat contrarian and we do want to kind of have some action in the last fight it's not just going to you know make you lose a little bit less what we like to do is presume we're going to lose the first 10 fights and in the 11th fight the, the main event tonight we're going to try to find something that pays at least 11 to 1 this way even if you lose everything else you're always in you're always in the game and Listen, a lot of this is fun and, and doing something for fun, even if it might not be the greatest EV spot in the world, that's, I think that's actually kind of healthy. Um, nonetheless, let's just get, get moving. You have, uh, and we are going to be putting these bets in right here, right now, if in fact DraftKings lasts and lets us. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they get annoyed that I'm running uh, a, uh, a live stream and they kind of block it until I stop the stream. But um if, if that happens, we'll be putting it right afterwards. Nonetheless, let's just get started. First fight of the night, we have Josephine Knudsen versus Marnik Mann. Very low-level fight. And essentially, the, the the public has has made a decision here, okay? And there is a reason, by the way, that I wait till Friday to do this. A lot of people feel as though if you're really sharp, you get your money in early. For me, it's the opposite. I want to wait as late as possible because I want to see where the public has, has convened as far as their 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 uh, their analysis uh, their analysis on this fight on all these fights, so we've agreed as a community that Josephine Knutson is just 
just a little more talented than Marnie Mann. Um, she has comes from a better camp. She's pretty much better everywhere. Marnie Mann, you know, might have a, you know, might be tough, but she really has no business been, being in the UFC. The only thing is that Knudsen, not everybody's convinced that she can actually get a finish here. So what people are really just kind of assuming is that either Josephine has a, a small chance she gets a, a a a finish, but really Josephine by decision is uh, probably the the. The, the thing that's agreed upon the most. Now, the uh, public confidence is not that high in this, so this is not the greatest contrarian fight. Um, but I, I would say that that the only thing you can really bet on this fight to be even somewhat contrarian is maybe Josephine in round one or Marty Mann by uh, just on the straight money line. And you know what? Female fights have enough variance in them where that's good enough for me. So we're going to take Marty Mann plus the 490 for 180. Um, okay, moving along, we have Alex Reyes versus Charlie Campbell. So, I mean, Charlie Campbell, this is kind of a set, not setup fight, but Alex Reyes has been off for six years. Um, and he does have a decent record, but coming off a six year layoff is, is kind of tough. And the thing is that Charlie Campbell, um, you know, he got in a banger with, uh, was Chris Duncan and he had Chris Duncan rocked and he was going you know, to knock him out. And then he just kind of got caught. So, you know, this is pretty easy. Campbell's probably going to attack him and get him out of there in the first round. Um, so we're not going to do that. I, I think that that line is, is way too overvalued. So we're probably not going to do that. So what we're going to do is probably take Campbell either round two um, or even by decision. And I wonder which is the better price, either Campbell round two or Campbell by decision. Let's see, actually. Campbell by decision is plus 700. Um, let's see Campbell in round two specifically. Let's see. Uh, round props. Campbell round two is plus 550. So the way that happens is that, you know, is 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 what's is Reyes is just kind of game enough to survive the first round and get, they get knocked out of there. I think that's probably, boy, oh boy, I wonder which is better, Campbell round two or Campbell by decision. You know what? In 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 the in the absence of anything else, we'll just go with what's more. So Campbell by decision. I mean, no one's doing this, right? Campbell by decision for 180. Okay, moving on. Tracy Cortez versus Jasmine Jones the Vicious. You're getting a lot of, you know, steam and, and opinions on both sides. So you're really not going to get any value as far as the um as far as the uh as the fighters go. But one thing that everybody is sort of agreeing upon that it's like wrestler versus wrestler. It's probably gonna be, I would say a boring fight, but kind of a wrestling-based fight. And it's probably not going to finish. You know, whoever gets the better of the exchange is going to grind out a decision. So we're going to put this fight inside the distance. I'm not good enough to figure out which one of these fighters is going to do that. But we're going to just we're just going to play that. So uh, let's see. Is there just a rake straight inside the distance? Yeah. Let's see. Um, just, 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 to, just to go the distance. Minus 400. I just want to finish. Where's just regular to finish? Fight lines. We could do the under winning method. And there's got to be a way, right? Just play the fight inside the distance. Or why, why am I not finding this? Fight props. Okay. Fight inside the distance plus 275 for 180. Okay. Um, moving on, we have Edgar Chires versus Daniel Lacerda. So it's, it's important to understand why the, 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 this bet, okay? Because this one is easy, right? So this is a fight that everybody is 100% sure is going to go one of two ways, okay? It's either going to be Lacerda in the first round because he's really, he, he always he always kills people in the first round or he just runs out of gas or Charez survives and gets him out of there in round two. Now, are those the two most likely outcomes? Yeah, probably. But people have been steaming on these particular narratives that both of those, both of those results just have to be bad value. 
Okay. So if we're going to bet this fight, which we're going to, we're either going to pay maybe Lacerda in round two, you know, which very few people will do, or maybe Chares in round one. And for me, it seems as though Chares in round one um, might be a little more likely to be played. I don't think that Lacerda in round two has is really on the table for anybody. So let's just take a look at this. Lacerda in round two is plus 1,400. Lacerda in round two. Chérez in round two is plus 850. That's actually quite amazing to me that it's actually this close. Because this is such a popular narrative, I think, that, that Chávez in round two will get there. So because of that, I mean, maybe we should just bet the fight to come in around two. But you know what? That 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 violates the rule. Okay. So we are going to play Lacerda in round two plus 1,400. And now you see why, by the way, we're getting something big on the main event because we are really going to lose all of these. But I know that we're getting good value. We are fading the public narrative. And that's really all you can do here. Last week, we just murdered it. <laughs> a couple of these. And we actually were 10 seconds away from getting another five to one shot in, which is, is kind of tilted. Nonetheless, uh, moving on, Roman Kopilov versus Josh Fremd. So you have Kopilov, who is a much better striker. Uh, the only thing is that he's kind of viewed as this guy that's a little just, he's not that aggressive. So if he's going to win, it's probably going to be like in round two or maybe even round or even by decision. And if Fremd wins, I mean, he's going to have to get the takedowns and probably win a decision. So... The, the things you could bet here is maybe Kopulov round one. And though that's always, that's always a tough one to root for, you know, because he is sort of measured and he's a smaller guy. So it's kind of a tough thing to imagine, you know what I mean? To, to need to only get five minutes for him to get this KO. So I think that's an uncomfortable enough um, pick where I might try it. Um, uh, the other thing you could do is maybe friend inside the distance, um, but let's just see what some of these lines are. So friends, well, friend by submission plus a thousand. That's ooh, friend by TKO is plus ten to one. Copy love in round one is only plus two twenty five. All right, that's good enough for me. There's no way anybody's got the cojones to bet that. So we're gonna do this. Copy love round one. We don't need by submission. It's not going to be a submission. Round one plus one for 180. Let me just make sure that I'm not giving something up. Like if you get some random, yeah, you know what we have to do? We'll give up the 25 cents here just in case Copy Law gets a submission. But let's say Friend goes for some terrible takedown and somehow Copy Law gets, gets a submission. I, I don't want that to happen and me lose just because I was that greedy. Um, so we're going to play just copy love in any form in round one plus 200. All right. Lupita Godinez versus Elise Reed. Um, okay. So really the narrative this week is that, is that Godinez has bad fight IQ and that, you know, if, if she really wanted to make things easy on herself, she would go for the wrestling. And if she wrestled, she would look, you know, she would look like minus a thousand. And if they stay striking, you know, Elise Reed is going to be sort of competitive. So what you really can't bet here is good genius by submission, um, because that is what, you know, people are, that, that's, that's the kind of the, that's what you're, you're kind of, that's what they're looking for. You know, they're looking for the genius, take her down, get a submission or good genius grinding her out and getting a, um, and getting a uh, and getting a decision. What you could bet here is one of two things. You could bet Elise Reed just straight money line at plus three thirty, or if you really have it in you, okay, you can play with the narrative that makes the most sense to me that no one is considering, and that is this: people have been complaining and whining for Godinez to wrestle for for fights now. And they've been complaining that she's been falling too in love with her hands and the, her hands have just gotten better. So uh, I can't see why she wouldn't go back to this again. 
So what we're going to try here, we're going to try Godinez by KO. So Godinez by KO plus 350. Now we do have a little bit of, of, of room for error here because she could go for takedowns and end up getting a, a ground and pound uh, uh, finish instead of getting it, you know, on the feet. If I would, if I could bet on Godinez finishing with a standing TKO and, instead of like on the ground, that would be, that would be pretty sweet. I bet you can do that somewhere, but I don't have the patience to find it. All right, let's look. Uh, moving on, we have Fernando Padilla versus Kyle Nelson. Yeah, um, this is, again, unfortunately, another fight, which there's not a real big consensus here. Um, they, they, What I am hearing is that Kyle Nelson is very durable. He's sort of a dog, you know, and he can make the fight kind of ugly. So I guess any, I guess anything by decision here is probably going to be a bad bet or is going to be over bet. I think that's what people are mostly going to be playing. Um, so let's just play Padilla inside the distance. Uh, it's, boy, but it's such an atrocious line though. You know, it's such an atrocious line that it's probably going to win. But let's take a look. Maybe some of these rounds are worth trying here. Oh, I know what we can do. What we can do is you could play Padilla by submission. That's what you could do. Get a little bit of juice over there. Padilla by decision is so, looks so juicy. Plus 300. Isn't this probably what's going to happen? I can't see anybody playing this one. Plus only 150. Maybe that's why that's the bet. Now we, we're, we're going to, we're going to be, we're, we're going to play the Padilla by submission. Padilla by submission. Plus 180. The idea is Nelson goes for some stupid takedown and Padilla just wraps him up. So Padilla by submission plus 400 for 180. All right, uh, moving on. We have Daniel Zellhuber versus Christian Christos Yagos. And essentially, Christos Yagos has, you know, he's another cardio problem. You know, he's, he's very aggressive in the first round um, and then he kind of gasses. So if he's going to win, it's probably going to be in the first round, maybe early second. But the idea is that Daniel Sale Huber is going to probably take over and either win very late or by decision. So those those are the things you can't bet. I mean, you can't bet Yago's early. You can't bet him even in the second round, probably, maybe. And you can't bet Zell Huber, uh, you know, by decision. So what you could do is either Yago's, I think, by decision, just hope that he gets enough done in the first two rounds and hangs on. Or Zell Huber just kind of surprises people and gets the first round KO. Let's take a look at some of these lines here. Um, Zell Huber round one, just for fun, is only plus 350. And that's just by KO. Let's take a look at this again. Zell Huber round one plus 275. Or this is what we have. You have to play. Yagos by decision, don't we? At plus 650. I mean, you gotta do this. So Yagos by decision plus 650. Yagos by submission looks pretty juicy, by the way, at plus 900 if he gets these takedowns. But uh, we're just gonna play Yagos by decision for plus 650 for 180. All right, uh, moving on. Raul Rosas Jr. versus Terrence Mitchell. Um, this is obviously we, we I don't think we can help ourselves, but this is this is a setup fight. You know, Rosas, you know, he, he ran out of cardio in his last fight, but he learned his lesson. So they're completely setting this up and bringing in this guy from the Alaskan fight scene. And nobody ever wins from the Alaska fight scene, with the exception of, if you might recall, several cards ago. We had the same narrative when we played Udo Smetic coming off the Alaskan fight scene. He couldn't win either, and we got a KO out of him. Okay, so it's just a question of people whether they want to, you know, lay the wood with Rosas. You know, whether they want to play him in round one, round one by sub. So those are the things you can't bet. The only things you could bet here, honestly, are Rosas round two, or, or if you have it in you. Just Mitchell straight up. 
So let's take a look and see what this is. Mitchell straight up is plus 525. Let's look at the round props. Let's look at Rosas round two. Wow. And Rosas round two is plus 550. Boy, oh boy. I think they're both very, very contrarian. I think they're both very interesting. Um, and boy, I don't know which one is, is going to be more contrarian. I think people might take a shot at Mitchell just because, um, you know, Rosas did lose his last fight. He's just kind of looks like kind of a hateable guy. Rosas round two, I don't think people will play. So let, we're going to try this one. Rosas in round two for 180. Um, was that the co no, there's a couple of more. Um Jack Madalena versus Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland is just everybody's favorite. Everybody loves to play Kevin Holland. He's been very, very active. And you're getting him at plus money against Jack Madalena Della Madalena, who just almost lost as a huge favorite to some grappler no one's heard of. Um, this to me is an extremely popular underdog to take Holland. So we're not going to do anything on the Holland side. Um, we're going to do something with Jack Della Madalena. And it's going to be either him by decision or him by by KO or even first round KO. So we're just going to have to look at the at the line at the the odds here. Let's see. Um Della Madalena. Round one is only plus 330. That's kind of gross. I think Madalena, by decision, winning a striking-based fight could be interesting at plus 300. I think that's better than taking him in just in round one. So Madalena, by decision, for 180. Just, just being the better striker. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to play, actually. Um, it really feels really feels awkward, which is probably why it's, it's what you're supposed to do. All right. Um, now, in the main event, we have to give all our money back because we really made some atrocious bets here. Just to remind ourselves what they are. We bet this atrocious Marnie command who has no business being the, the UFC, plus 490 for 180. So that's a loser. Campbell, I mean, you think Alex Reyes coming off an eight-year layoff or six-year layoff is going to survive three rounds against an aggressive fighter? No way. So we're going to lose that. So we bet that one. Uh, Cortez, Jasmine, Juice, Joe's the Vicious, two women fighters who never finish anybody, just going to wrestle each other. So what are we doing betting this fight to finish? Who knows, but we did it. This one's easy. I mean, how's anybody betting this? Because Lacerda is either going to win, win, win round one or Chira is going to take over later. So getting him to win in round two requires him to have two rounds of cardio. How's that possible? Plus 1,400. So that's that's a loser. Kopilov, you know, this is the sucker bet. Not even a sucker bet. I mean, Kopilov is much more measured. He's probably going to win in round two or three or probably maybe decision. You're not, no one's going to play him in round one except for us, so we're losing that. Godinez, is, you know, probably going to either grind out a decision, right, or get a submission with the takedowns. This, 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 this outcome, how could this possibly happen? Just because she's fallen in love with her hands and she actually could get this knockout on the feet? Or maybe, just maybe, she gets the takedown and gets ground and pound instead of a submission. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, Padilla winning by submission, plus 400. Again, you know, this is this is more Nelson's game, kind of the grappling, you know, so this is probably stupid. Yagos, I mean, he's got another, another, another anti-cardio play. You know, if Yagos doesn't get him out of there in the first or second round, he's got no shot. So playing him by decision is basically throwing money in the trash can. Rosas round two, um, you know, he's he's probably just going to get him out of there in round one. Uh, this guy's, you know, just being set up to, to, to lose here. So, I mean, the fact that, that, that this can last two rounds is probably ridiculous. But nonetheless, we'll take the plus 550 round two. Uh, Kevin Holland, everybody's favorite underdog here. He's got a reach advantage. He actually has a grappling advantage. Jack Della Medellin is basically a fraud. Has basically beaten nobody. So I don't know why he's favored. So we're going to play him anyway. So we are going to be 0 and 10 going into this main event. So we have to play something that is going to be 11 or 1 or higher. So this fight has been analyzed to the death. 
Um, and this is, this is, here's a couple of things. Okay. So number one, I've heard that most of the time where a champion loses her belt and they have the rematch, the champion loses again. People say that, and everybody said that without any, ever supporting it. They used the Leon Edwards fight as an example, and that was one example. They forgot that Adesanya got his revenge against uh, Pahaya, um, and there's probably a bunch of others. So that's one bit of the public going on the the uh, the Grasso side. But then on the other hand, you have the the obvious that being that. In their last fight, Shevchenko was at minus a thousand, you know, and now it's basically pick him at minus one sixty. Why would you bet Grasso at plus one twenty or whatever plus one forty when you didn't bet her at plus a thousand? Um, so in that case, the public might say, "Oh, let's let's play Shevchenko." You know, she was winning that last fight. You know, she was winning that last fight. Why would you know? Why wouldn't we bet her here at like minus one sixty or whatever it is? This is quite the market overcorrection. So betting on either of these fighters is just not going to work, um, just straight up. But when we look at the, the styles here, here is what I'm hearing. I'm getting that Shevchenko, uh, her main path to victory is going to be the rest. Okay. So uh, uh, that was where she had most of the edge, and she just needs to win, so she's going to grind this out. And, and get a whole bunch of takedowns and win, and make a decision, okay? And if Grasso wins, she could, you know, I don't know, maybe get another uh, another finish or something like that, but Grasso getting a, you know, winning a decision is probably not going to be her main path to victory, I guess. So all we can really do here is we have to play Shevchenko inside the distance, but it's, that's not going to be good enough. We're going to have to pick a specific round, okay? And if we don't do that, we're going to have to play Grasso by decision. That's not going to be good enough. So let's take a look at these lines and let's see what some of these odds are. I guarantee you that you'll be able to find something good here um, with Shevchenko. And we're just taking a stab, okay? But basically any of these rounds are going to work, are going to work for her. And I think that because she is... 35 i think it's probably going to you know i think she's going to take a little while to grind on her so we are going to pick round number three so shevchenko oh that's that tko that's not going to be good enough oh see here's the problem ah dang it i was I, it did look too juicy didn't it all right that's what i figured it's still the same thing okay all of these are are, are good enough this is not, I think if Shevchenko hasn't gotten around of there by, in, by round four, she's not getting around of there in round five. So I don't like this one. It's either going to be round three or round four. Let's just go with round three. So once again, I think if it gets to round four, it just becomes that much less likely she can get that finish. If she's, if she's, you know, good at three, you know, if she's dominating, because that's the only way she gets this, if she dominates. If she dominates on the ground, and it's been like three rounds, and she hasn't gotten out of there yet, she then knows that she could probably cruise the last two. You know what I mean? Um, so let's play round three as the way to get all of our money back. And we're going to need to get all of our money back. Our money back, I promise you that. So there we go. Uh, 11 bets, 11 contrarian bets, probably 11 losers, but but the idea is that in the long run, thinking about things this way is going to help you become just much sharper in general. And who knows? Maybe like last week when we just we just killed it. We had a whole bunch of good stuff last week. But uh, that's where we're that's what we're doing this week. Let's see if we can pet this right now. Let's see. And no, so we have to wait till we log off. But we will. Uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.